We had followed the frets on this guitar yesterday, I believe, and I wasn't quite satisfied with everything. I didn't change the springs on it yet because uh, I'm still working on it. Now I said yesterday that uh, that I was probably going to make a fret nut for it up here, to make the fret nut a little bit taller. This one is made out of plastic. Here, <clears throat> and I don't have it, I should have brought it with me, but uh, I had a lot of different guitar, the bridges and everything, and uh, I had some off of Merle Haggard's guitars that were really good ebony. Now you can take those guitars and cut a piece off of it, that, that uh, bridge, because they're cracked in the middle, but you can cut a piece off of it and make a real good ebony uh, fret nut. But I've, I've got the, all this ivory. Here's a lot of ivory blanks. Now this is it's just basically a rectangle. I'll bring it up and show it to you a little better. Just a rectangle. Piece of ivory. Now I think I paid four dollars and fifty cents or something like that for these. And over here and get this other one. <laughs> that was probably 30 or 40 years ago when I bought these. I haven't done this work for a while, and even though I've done one now and then for somebody or for myself. Now this looked like that when I started on it. I'm going to show you how I worked on it. First of all, we got the fret file that I made 50 years ago or more, somewhere around there. And you take a bastard file, that's what it's called, and you drill a hole in it here. The hardness is not quite as bad, right, it's strong right here. So you drill a hole in this thing and, and where you can put a bolt through it and then you have to countersink the bolt where it's going to go so it doesn't scratch the frets when you're filing your frets on both sides because you can use both sides of this. And then I put a little knob on here, a drawer knob, a drawing drawer knob that I put on the thing and I've used that thing for thousands of frets. Here's a bridge material for here. This was three dollars and twenty-five cents <laughs> way back then. That's ivory also. This is real stuff. This is what I used on the best of the guitars. Merle Haggard's, Buck Owens', uh, Ricky Nelson's, all of those people, uh, Maeve Nutter, I can't even remember all of one Red Simpson. When we worked on a guitar, we put the best materials back on it, whether it had that on it to begin with or not. Some of them don't. Here is a fret nut off of one of uh, Buck Owens' guitars. I think that was a Fender. Anyway, it's very old as you can see. Here's other ones that I took off of different ones. This is the plastic one. It. Uh, Probably maybe a fender also on that one. Different ones here. These are plastic. But when I replace them, now here's one I made. Here's one I made probably out of one of the Merle Haggard's bridges. And I don't know what that goes on. Maybe a Gibson guitar or something. Here's another one that I made, right here. And that one was on the Gibson guitar. I remember when that one broke, a piece of it broke off the edge. <clears throat> and all kinds of little material and pieces in here. Here's another one that's, that's ivory also. That's probably a, An acoustic guitar, I can't remember what kind it goes on to, but it's it's ivory also. Here's a little uh, Mother of Pearl that I would make of these and put them in the guitar some places. And uh, there's all different kinds of bridges and fret nuts in here. That's a probably a classical guitar. 
probably a classical. See the strings are high on one end, and that's ivory also. We can get back to this now. What we're doing, I may even do a saddle here. I don't know. Put this back in here now. What I did originally, I took this blank fret nut and I laid it here like this. And I ground it off to where it was the same width. And then I took a pencil and I marked where all of the strings go. Then I began to take the file and I beveled the edge here where the strings go across. And I also took it and, uh, as you can see, I took the face of this off a little bit here. So it is uh, beveled also. So we're going to bevel this one. I've cut notches in here. Uh, these um, set of machinist files here are very important when you're doing this by hand. A lot of people won't do this today, but we did this, and I still do. You take these machinist files, and you I lay them down here, and I cut a little notch in there. Now to get the edge, the beveled edge, you take it like this and you lay it down and you just take and it takes the edge off of there. You want to round off the edges here, right on the edge there, just a little bit. On both sides. And you want the strings to go over a little more smoothly there, so we'll take it off the top a little bit, smooth it down on the front edge there and then I'm going to have to fit it in that notch where the fret nut goes. I may have to take more of it off. Now that's looking like the old one did now. I will take that card file and I'll clean that file up. I don't know how much this stuff costs today. I haven't bought any for a long time. It takes patience and, uh, and know-how to do this, to tell you the truth. As I was filing fresh yesterday, I was pulling down on the neck, so to make the neck the same it would be if it had strings on it, which that takes a lifetime of practice to do that. They do a lot of things now differently than, than what we did in the old days, but I worked on the best, some of the best guitars in the world, and some of the best artists, and so it worked. If you're out there working in a music program in a church or whatever, uh, maybe this will help you on your own guitar. Guitars are not set up when they come from the factory. Buck Owens, Merle Haggard, Whoever, they would send their guitars to us, they'd buy brand new ones. Merle Haggard used to buy six uh, Martin D45s at a time. They had a little rough on them. And he'd send them all to us before he ever played them. And we'd set them up, do a setup on them. We'd drop the strings down where they're easier to play. And make it sound like it was supposed to sound. Now that bridge... That bridge is just like it ought to be now. I did a little bit before I started count on the camera, so you wouldn't have to wait so long to see this. But now it's beveled on the front side here. It's straight up in the back. It's got a little bevel here coming down like that. And all that is done by hand. That wasn't any of that by machine. As you saw what I'm doing here, I'm doing it. Now, I've got the my best guitar tuner here. <clears throat> I can't hear now. So I'm a death luthier. But I still can do the work. 
even though I'm shaky. But uh, I have to have a little better tool to, to do the hearing with for me. I'll have to drop the spring tension on here again. These twisters are really nice to have. If you're working on guitars, it's not nice to have them, it's necessary. So we need to be twisting that all day long. I'll take that fret nut out of there and we're gonna see if I can get it out now. Unless the motor's still a little bit tight. later and I'll show you how to do that. We're going to do one thing at a time. <clears throat> now I'll have to fit these this fret nut and, and this and the strings down and you have to make this each fret groove there. You have to make that for your for your strings, the size of your strings, the width. Now let's see if I how well I did here. with my experience of doing these. There it is. Now this one is a stamped one. It's stamped out even though it's an expensive guitar that's plastic. And you can see the little stamp where it was stamped out there. It's a nice one, but it's plastic. Well, let's see if I can Looks like I'm going to have to take some off of this fret nut by a long shot. I've got to take a lot off of this one. I don't know whether I'm going to put you through the torture to see me do all of that. Like it saw me torturing you trying to tune the guitar, but I should I used to be able to tune in three or four minutes and it took me fifteen or twenty yesterday because I can't hear. This is all when you're doing this, this is all hand work. You can smell the bone. I could get a mic and mic the thing as I'm going. Looking better. We can't make it too small. Then we've got a way to go.
You have to do a lot of this by feel and touch. Since I've done this uh, dozens and dozens of times, I know what the feel and the touch is supposed to be like. Check it out now again. See how we're doing here. You can do this with a sander, but a belt sander, but it would be sometimes you go too far very fast. Doing this by hand is you don't whoops, you don't lose any blanks that way. Retina is exactly the same width, I got that right. We'll try it again. We've got a way to go. too much of it off. If you get too much of it off, then you, you can't put it back on. You cut a board wrong, too short, and you can't put it back on. Just like you're working on these fret nuts. Take too much off, you're, you lost your fret nut. See if one of these others are that one uh, almost the right size there. Let's see about that one. Oh yeah, it is the right size. I had a little thicker, bit thicker one. See there, that one is. Keep on going here.
see how we're doing. Almost. Sometimes people put a little glue in there with these. The hold them in place, but you don't have to. We used to do that some. Then you gotta bust them out of there if you have to do, replace it or work on it. down here on this file you can see how far that I'm uh, how much this bone I'm taking off if you don't get it wide enough it'll split the wood and it'll rattle if you get it too loose there. Bear with me. Hopefully you see what I'm doing here. Grind your own fingernails off doing this too. Should be almost there. Maybe you see the only person that does these nowadays doing this, I don't know. Anyone else is still doing this, making these fret nuts by hand. Yeah, I heard one.
Okay, he's trying to stretch. And when you loosen them up, they tighten back up. <clears throat> Make sure it doesn't in there too tight. We don't want to break the veneer off of that wood. Which can be done. Take a little bit off the edge of this. It's just a 15 to 20 thousand too thick. I'm going to do this like I was doing it for Buck Owens or Merle Haggard or Ricky Nelson or something right here. I never worked on Willie Nelson's guitars. I've gone to real good guitar, good share of guitars. I don't know whether you know this or not, Buck Owens was my family, basically. My stepfather was his uncle. And I was in his house a lot. His wife, Phyllis, was my stepfather's niece. Just about right. Uh, let's see. That's right down in there. Now you're seeing somebody hand make a fret nut. See if I can twirl these things back up there a little bit.
Got a little more clearance there this time. Stretch and stretch and stretch. <clears throat>
just a little bit lower on the bottom end. The top end I'm going to leave them be. Right exactly where they are. I can feel a little more sound coming out of them with a bone fret nut. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll be doing a few more of these. I probably will put some strings on and different things off and on. Please come back and watch again. Thank you. Thank you.